into herbalism. Um, my learning has happened in most of the community spaces. Um, like when I connected with Rashika back in 2017, um, I was doing a lot of community-based kind of workshops um, and at gardens, wolf gardens, etc. Um, and yeah, so I went to study uh, at Lincoln, started in 2019 and finished last year. And so I kind of always knew because I've, I've been a part of like health groups in, my own, in the black community in London. So I always knew that that's where I wanted to concentrate my work um, because of the health disparities that we experience in this country. Um, and I understand by being in these communities that there is a need for us to return to more natural ways. Um, being here because of the harm that has been caused historically by the medical system on black bodies um, and the harm that continues to be caused by just engaging with the medical system over here. Um, but I wasn't sure what that looked like. You know, going through your training, it's, uh, the concentration is on one-to-one, -one, seeing people one-to-one. -one. Um, but yeah, as soon as I finished last summer, I started, I literally came down and assisted Rashika on a workshop like the weekend before my final exams. And I met someone else there who does a lot of work with a lot of community gardens in London. And she was like, we're looking for a herbalist to come and do a workshop. Um, so this was May Project Gardens. Um, and they're a grassroots organisation um, empowering marginalised communities through gardening and permaculture. And they were running a series called Natural City Living. Um, and yeah, so they invited me down to come and do a herbal remedies workshop and the reception was just amazing. I was invited back. Um, so that was kind of my start just last summer. Um, so I then connected with Coco Collective, uh, Afro-diaspora-led community growing space uh, in Lewisham in London. I just rocked up at one of their events and I said, hi, I'm a herbalist. And it was like a squeal and it was like, we need you. <laughs> and um, I did a free offering there, I did a herb walk uh, and then I came back in the spring um, and did a spring the remedies workshop so the workshop always kind of takes on the practical aspect of getting people to make their own preparations as well as tasting things having discussions around the history and the politics of, of herbal medicine as well um, in this country and kind of globally um, so yeah I'm kind of working with them now to start a herb garden um, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so part of my own journey has been um, to reconnect to my ancestral healing traditions and plant knowledge. I'm second generation Jamaican. Um, and I just want to add here that, you know, even the term traditional Western herbalism is problematic because that is, most of it is cultural appropriation in itself. So just to acknowledge that. But it's it's also, there's been an intentional effort to erase Africa's um, botanical history and contribution to what herbal medicine is today um, and the conventional med medical system. So, like, re reclaiming and reconnecting this knowledge and sharing it in my community um, is an important part of my work. Um, and I'm literally sharing as I go along, as I learn. Um, it became apparent really quickly at Lincoln that I wasn't going to get what I needed culturally and spiritually, um, ancestrally, you know, mind, body, spirit, soul, there's no separation in with that in terms of healing. Um, so yeah, I, I had to kind of seek out my own herbal teachers and I did a lot of extracurricular studies. So many black herbalists from the States and across the Caribbean. Um, so yeah, this is, this is the stuff that kind of feeds my soul. Um, and yeah, so I held, so all the workshops that I've been doing so far have been kind of collaborative in community gardens. And so I held my own um, 
event workshop called Heart Space two weeks ago. Um, and it's the first of a series uh, looking at community herbalism as, um, as a means for black liberation. So it's a space for people of African descent only, and I'm apologetic about it being that way because of the history of extraction and exploitation and cultural appropriation. Um, so I'm very protective of that. So it's a culturally supportive and healing space where we can be ourselves where we can't be out in wider society. Um, so the aim of Heart Space is to provide health education, um, learn body literacy. I think we're in such a time where we're disconnected from the body ourselves, so it's hard for us to understand certain disease processes, like if you don't understand what's actually happening in the body, you know, that disconnect. Um, and sharing the knowledge of herbal medicine, especially the ancestral and the traditional stuff We've just been, you know, my ancestors kept so much knowledge alive. There's this narrative push that when they were human trafficked from Africa across the Atlantic, that, you know, they were, they were blank slates and they had no information, and that's a complete lie. Um, we came there as healers. You know, we, we, we recognised, obviously had to adapt to a lot of the plants when we went to, but we already had that knowledge, we already had that botanical knowledge. Um, so yeah, in these workshops we're looking at the areas of health where we have the most disparities. So in, in the UK at the moment, that's diabetes, that's um, cardiovascular disease, etc. Looking at the root causes, which is systemic, which is racial trauma, um, I hate the word microaggression because there's nothing micro about aggression. <laughs> aggression is aggression. Um, and this is what we live with every day. This is the stress, you know, this is what affects our housing, this is what affects our employment, this is what affects us just being stopped on the street while you're trying to go about daily life. Um, so this is the root cause of why, you know, we, we have all this illness. Um, so yeah, so it's looking at how we can utilise herbalism as preventative care to keep us well and keep us thriving in an oppressive system um, instead of just being in survival mode, like Claudia was saying earlier, it's just, just daily struggle. Um, so in the current medical system that we have, I see having autonomy over our health and being well is an act of resistance. So heart space is about sharing the knowledge and the tools to enable people to take care of themselves um, and be more self-reliant. I describe the relationship that we have with conventional medicine as, as, as codependent, but it's it's no one's fault. Like that's how we've been conditioned. Um, so we held it at Coco's Garden. You know, we were outside. It's connecting to the land because that's a lot of where this community healing needs to happen as well because of the violent rupture from the lands that they were taken from. Um, so reconnecting that is just reconnecting to our ancestral legacies. Um, so in terms of kind of just thinking about herbalism and improving the health of communities, like stuff that I think about is healing is a collective experience. You know, um, conventional medicine teaches us that illness happens in a vacuum. And like we've been talking about before, it's everything's on the individual. The health of an individual is dependent on and connected to their environment and the systems around them, and that includes the communities that they, that they belong to. Um, this is completely ignored. So before traditional medicine was disrupted by you know, colonialism, the state, religious institutions, it was practiced in community. Um, the medicine women, because that's what it was at the time, took care of the community, the community took care of her, you know, and that's how it's been in um, most indigenous cultures. Um, health outcomes today, uh, just going back to like, what I was saying about racial trauma, is it's a direct result of the trauma that a group has experienced 
and I think about um, from being from the Caribbean, four or five hundred years of labour in sugar, and we have the highest rates of diabetes. That you know, there's a correlation there. Um, and also, just our ancestors forced into health and healing approaches that were totally different to theirs. And I think community spaces offer the opportunity to reconnect and reclaim these traditions. Um, and also the gifts and the qualities inherited from our lineages. Um, it's a space for collective healing from all the other layers of stuff as well, all the inter intergenerational stuff, all the vicarious trauma as well. Um, so like we had a meeting about a session on Wednesday it was funny, I sat down to write some notes and someone had shared the article about, um, so the government has rejected setting targets to reduce black maternal rates. And um, I wrote down the quote of what, they, what their response was. We do not believe a target and strategy is the best approach towards progress. So I'm like, well, what is the approach? <laughs> um, so this kind of led me to sit down and think, you know, like in the blurb, we, we talk about system changes, etc. And it's absolutely imperative that we keep the conversation going and collective action about system change. But at the same time, being realistic is, I don't know if that's going to happen in my lifetime. So thinking about what is my role in the meantime, and for me, that is liberatory strategies it's resistance, um, it's the sharing of the knowledge that I have and educating the community groups that I'm a part of, not being a container for information um, like we see in the wider herbal community. Um, it's about self-reliance um, and it's about disengagement. Um, and I just wanted to make a quick point about kind of this whole thing, the whole thing about decolonization um, and there being a lot of lip service around it, but not a lot of action. And this is something that happened at Lincoln after the George Floyd uh, in 2020. It was this, oh my God, we need to decolonize the curriculum. They'd sent a meeting request. I looked through all the, t the attendees and I was the only black person on there. Um, and it is a bit like, one, I'm not, spoke, I'm not a black people spokesperson, I'm not going to be tokenised, so I didn't go to the meeting. Um, but then I was there for another two years and nothing actually changed with the curriculum. <laughs> and you know, and this is stuff that I see with herbalists on Instagram all the time. Um, there was a, another, there was some other herbalists who were on a radio show in 2020 talking about decolonizing herbal medicine, but then did an Instagram post where they were talking about native herbs from around the world, and there was nothing about Africa, so I left a comment, and I was like, no herbs come from Africa? And it was like, and I was like, you were just on the radio talking about decolonizing herbalism. No, they got black and brown people to come in and decolonize. Yeah, 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 so they, yeah, they came and got other people to do the labor, yeah. yeah. Um, so again, you know, it's it's jumping on bandwagons and trends um, when we're talking about these things, particularly like decolonisation. So I just wanted to make that point as well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my work. Um, yeah, I see most of my one-to-one -one patients now have come from my workshops um, where they've wanted more one-to-one -one care. Um, yeah, after finding.